Hey, welcome. So today I have um, a 1978 Royal Sabre that we're going to be looking at. This is the original green. So 1978 is probably one of the newest um, or youngest typewriters that we would work on. We really do not go into the 80s at all and we just keep it um, 70s and older. So this is going to be one of the youngest typewriters that uh, we work on in our shop. Um, and this is a very popular typewriter among um, uh, teens they and uh, young adult women. They really seem to like this uh, particular style of typewriter. And they're really good, good machines. So I am going to show you how to use one. I actually haven't touched one in a really long time. So this is going to be like a new, a new thing for me because it's probably been over a year since I've actually typed on a saber. But, um, what was going to say? Oh, and if you want to see the demo video, I have been trying to remember at the end of the videos, you know, when it pops up for a suggested video, I've been trying to link the demonstration videos to it so that you could click on that and see actually how it types because I don't do that in the tutorials anymore. I'm just here to show you um, how to use it if you've got one. So let's go ahead and get started. And um, we're going to start with the back and we're going to make our way forward. So Royal started the whole magic margin kind of thing uh, way back in the 40s, I believe. And if you like that kind of thing, that's awesome. But uh, so there's no, you know, pressing and dragging to set margins or tabs. And in this case, they don't call it tabs, they call it columns. So this is what the front looks like. And it says magic column. And I'll show you that. So uh, before I load the paper and do the ma margins, let me just go over a couple of things with you. To release this carriage, there's a silver lever behind the handle here, and it's on both sides, and it doesn't matter which side you use. It releases the carriage, and it's going to pull over to the left. That's because the draw band has tension on it, and um, so if you've never touched a typewriter and you pull that in, you might be surprised at how much it pulls to the side, and that's supposed to be the way it is. This is a paper release, and I'll show you that in a, in a moment, but that releases the tension on the paper. And then this is a line selector, um, and that is for, this is an all manual typewriter. You have to do everything manually, so when you, it's time to go to the next line, hit your return handle, and that's gonna advance either one or two lines. So let's go ahead and load a piece of paper, and it's gonna go right here. Now I am gonna use, a piece of paper that I used earlier. And so when you're loading paper and let's say, you know, I've got typing on this side and I want to type on this side, you want to put your paper in with the type facing you. And then it'll flip it over and you can type on the back end. There you go. So that loaded just fine, perfectly nice and even, but if it hadn't been even, then you can take this paper release, pull it forward, it releases the tension and you can move the paper around um, and to get it nice and even and then make sure you re-engage it because if you don't, it's not gonna feed properly. Okay, so to set your margins, right now the margin is set right there on the left, and I want it to go this way. So I am gonna press down my magic margin and release the carriage at the same time and then go to where I want it and release them, okay? So now my margin is over here. Let's check our right margins. My right margin is right here, same thing. If I wanna go out, I gotta press down, hold, <clears throat> at the same time release my carriage, and then go out, okay? Now my margins <clears throat> are way out here. If you wanna make your margins narrower, it's a lot simpler. You just kinda find the place you want, press the button. You can hear it kinda snap. Same over here, let's say, let's put it right here. 
and you can kind of, again, hear it slide over. So now there's my left, there's my right. And that bell is, sounds so good, um, but that bell is to tell you, hey, warning margin, because unlike a computer, a typewriter, um, it doesn't just automatically go to the next line. Uh, the typewriter, you have to tell it where you want it to end, and then it's going to just stop. And you have to manually go to the next line. But what if you're in the middle of a word and you don't want to go to the next line? So that happens. Let me show you what to do. So, um, so this is a royal... There's that bell saying, hey, you're really close to your margin. I'm about to stop. Saber. So there it stopped. If I hit margin release, that releases that. I can finish my word and then go on to the next line. Same thing with columns. So here's the column button. I don't know if anything is set. Let me press it. There's one set right there. So. I'm gonna hit column clear, and I haven't tested to see if these are working because honestly, on vintage typewriters, the things that work, that don't work the most often are the tabs slash columns. Okay, so that worked, it cleared it. So now, if I want to set it, then I'm just gonna, let's say I'll put it right here, column set, just press it, and that's it. Let's hit column, there it is. To clear it, clear, clear, okay? Same thing, awesome. Now, um, here's your backspace. We're gonna take a look at this real quick. Backspace, remember backspace doesn't erase, so if you make a mistake, you just type over it, or you X through it, or you line through it, and then you just type it again. So typing is a little messy, um, but it's okay. It's just part of using a typewriter. Over here, you have LMH. That just determines how hard your type bars are gonna strike your paper. So while we're talking about type bars, let's take a look at them. I am gonna move this carriage all the way to the left so that this handle isn't anywhere near the top of my cover because I don't want it to scrape when I try to take this off. So on these covers, you do have to pull pretty hard. So I just kind of hold the typewriter down with one hand and pull with the other and yank it off. And here you go. So here's your type bars, here's your spool, and here's your manual ribbon reversal. Okay, it doesn't matter which side, but that's how you reverse the direction of your spool. Because when you get, when the, all the ribbon moves to one side, you want it to go back to the other side. Because there's a lot of ink in that ribbon, and it's going to last you a really long time. All right, when it is time to change your ribbon, you just take them out. It's just really easy. Pull it out, and it'll slide out of the guide wires. Um, but kind of pay attention to how the ribbon is threaded. Now, if you didn't pay attention or yours didn't come with properly threaded ribbon, then there is, lucky for you, uh, in the description below is a link to um, the product listing and that'll have an up close photo of this whole area and that way you can compare your typewriter to this one and you can see how it's threaded. So make sure black on top, red on bottom um, and on these guide wires, you have to pay attention to where the little slits are. So for example, to slide the ribbon in, it's gonna be right here. It's kinda at the top. And I can't show you how to load ribbon because this is all you would see, because my hands would have to be in there. So all you would see the back of my hands. But you gotta slide your ribbon down back here and through the back and then through these guide wires here. So again, go reference that photo in the product listing, bookmark it, save the photo, whatever you need, um, so that every time you change your ribbon, you can go back and take a look at that. Okay, let's go ahead and put the cover back on. So the cover has two metal uh, pin, uh, I don't know what to call them, just two metal pieces that stick out. 
they're gonna go, you'll see a hole here and a hole here, and you just need to line it up. Um, the opening goes towards the ribbon, your paper. And it just snaps down like that. And when you do ink your ribbons, it's messy. You're gonna, you may want to wear gloves or just have um, an old rag handy, and it'll wipe right off your typewriter because you will get it everywhere. Okay, so that. Oh, one more thing. Your color selector. You've got red, black, and then the white means stencil. You're not gonna use it, um, but if it's on stencil. It's not good at type. I mean, you'll see the, you'll see it going, but you'll be like, where's the, there's no letters. Um, so if something like that happens to you, you're typing and there's no letters or it's really faint or it doesn't feel right, two things to check. One, make sure that your color selector isn't on stencil. Um, and the other is uh, see if you need to reverse the direction of your ribbon. And you don't have to take the top off. You can just tap right here to reverse the direction of your ribbon. Okay, that is how to use a Royal Saber. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you enjoy your typewriter and have a great day.